What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 81 of the Hive Mind Podcast. This week's going to be a little bit dark, uh, but I had some things I wanted to say and um, haven't done a podcast in a while. So anyway, here we go. So uh, this week has been pretty dark for the uh, the YouTube fitness community slash uh, Crowfall community. A lot, of, a lot of people kicked the bucket this week. And, uh, you know, ugh, it fucking sucks, man. It does. It does. So um, a lot of you guys probably know I've been on a fitness kick for the past two years or so. And uh, if you go back and look at my old videos, you'll see that I was a real fat piece of shit. At this point, I'm down about 120 pounds, and I put on a ton of muscle as well. Um, way stronger than I used to be. I look way different than I used to. And through this two-year process, I've watched a lot of fitness YouTubers. And one of the ones that I really like to watch was a guy named Rich Piana. Now, Rich Piana, huge bodybuilder, probably maybe the biggest fitness channel on YouTube in terms of like views and popularity. Um, but his channel is not a channel you want to watch for informative content on like how to do deadlifts, for example. I recommend channels like X or Alan Thrall for that kind of stuff for the instructional things. Um, but Rich Piana was a very entertaining character, um, and he was very motivational in kind of a weird way. Um, I, the whole Bigger by the Day series, that's kind of his, like, Mona Lisa, and that sort of kept me on track. He did this, uh, this series called Bigger by the Day where he wanted to put on 30 pounds of muscle in, I think, three months or something like that, and he took a ridiculous steroid cycle, um, was eating all this food, was eating like 12 times a day and working out twice a day. And, uh, he was documenting this entire process and I think he successfully did it and watching that whole process go down and watching him document it. And the guy was very honest with what he did and the steroid usage and, uh, probably one of the, uh, the realest guys about it. Uh, long before people were doing it. At this point, the steroid shit is out of the bag. Nobody's, b Nobody believes that these athletes anymore are natural. Like it, The shit is out of the bag, and part of that is due to Rich Piana being so open about it and kind of just educating people on the fact that like all these fucking guys do it. Like They all fucking do it. And even in uh, sports you wouldn't even think they're, they're juicing it up in. They're juicing it up. So... Um, Anyway, Rich Piana, uh, I really, I really like this stuff, and he's probably the first celebrity slash YouTuber um, person that has died that actually had like a pretty big impact on my life. Like, I, I can't think of any other celebrity or like big figure where them dying has actually meant something, kind of. But this guy, I don't know, he, he kind of kept me on track, and I mean, it's undeniable that he had some effect on my life because I've taken some of his advice uh, one thing I do now that you know a little tip that he gave me was um, he mentioned in a video where if you're getting really sore one of the best things you can do is just like walk like just you wouldn't think like just fucking walk like two miles on a treadmill just a nice easy pace like three point I put it on like the speed on 3.3 and if even if my like arms are sore a good way to help alleviate some of that soreness is to just get on a, a treadmill and just walk for like two miles get the blood flowing and it helps a lot it really helps with like legs man if you if you destroy yourself with some squats just go for a nice nice walk easy pace and just get the blood flowing and it'll it'll help you be a lot less sore another thing uh, another tip the um side lateral raises on uh cable machines using a cable machine and stepping away from the cable machine about a foot out and having the constant tension of the cable machine doing it side laterals that way uh, in addition to just the dumbbells, um, that helped my um, my side delts get a lot stronger because that man that fucking really burns up your your side delts doing it with the cables like that. Um, so yeah, you know, even though his channel is not exactly prime education material, there were some some good gems of uh, some good diamonds in the rough when it came to um, knowledge. And I don't know, he was just an entertaining character, man. Watching that Bigger by the Day series kind of kept me on track because it was almost like a routine where I would watch that on my lunch break. And uh, I don't know, it just sort of kept me on track. So I'm going to miss that big fucking bastard um, for sure. And, um, you know, pushed it to the limits, man. He, he, he really fucking 
He really fucking did that shit. Like, he really fucking, like, his whole, like, 5% branding. He has, like, a whole bunch of catchphrases associated with him. And goddamn, were they relevant. Like, you can't say the dude was fake. You can't say that, oh, it was just an act. The whole love it, kill it, fucking leaving humanity behind. I mean, he fucking did. Like, he fucking loved it, killed it, and left humanity behind. Like, I mean, in a weird poetic way, like, is this... This is the way it should have happened? Like, it's the way it... it I mean, really? Did, did Rich Piano really want to die to fucking... I don't know. Uh, what's what's something lame to die from that people die from all the time? Um, I don't know. Like, is Rich Piano really the fucking guy that wants to die to, like, pancreatic cancer? I mean, come on. Um, you know, I, I think, I guess, I guess this is an, an appropriate end as it could be, but, um, you know. Fuck. I miss that bastard. It's fucking cookie, and I, I I like I like that he embraced the meme too. I never I never uh, I never talked about that, but I mean this this guy really he really embraced the memes, and uh, he didn't block comments on his channel. There was the whole rich the whole rich piano thing, uh, rich piano. Uh, everybody called him that because it's piano piano whatever. Um, the natty anthem, the fucking cookie time, the eight hour arm work. Like there was just so many memes that he like embraced and didn't fucking, I don't know, man. It, 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 I like that guy. I like that guy. So anyway, I'm gonna miss that bastard. And, um, yeah. Um, anyway, I thought it was an interesting character just because, uh, successful in multiple avenues, man. He was a, a successful businessman, successful, um, you know, made millions of dollars in multiple avenues, so, I just see a lot of people, like, talking shit about him, like, oh, look at this big, dumb fucking retard taking all these steroids, like, yeah, like, I mean, that's, that's his fucking thing, he, li he liked to do that shit, right, but, I mean, you can't say it was dumb, guy literally made, like, millions of dollars in multiple TV commercials, real estate, investing, and then bodybuilding, which was probably his least successful thing, which is the thing people know him for, so, you know, whatever, um, Another guy died in the bodybuilding uh, fitness world, a guy named Dallas McCarver. I'm not super familiar with this guy. I think he's like a, a pretty or was a pretty competitive guy. Um, so I don't know much about that. Um, I, I think he choked or something. Uh, but again, the choking with, the, uh, you know, who really fucking knows? Um, and another guy, uh, C.T. Fletcher, another fucking fitness bodybuilder type. He uh, he hasn't he didn't die. But he needs a new heart, so he has to get a heart transplant. He's on a waiting list, and generally, that's not good. That's that's not good. There's a lot of people that, that don't fucking make it there. So, um, yeah, the fucking YouTube, bodybuilding, weightlifting, whatever you want to call it, um, community is just been getting shit on, man. They've just been real bad news constantly. So, yeah. And then, uh, and then to hit the gaming community with the with the Crowfall community, um, a lot of you guys might know this guy if you are on the Crowfall forums a good bit. This name might sound familiar to a guy named uh, Cool Waters. He unfortunately uh, passed away, and um, yeah, that's that fucking sucks, man. That that guy gave some some really good feedback, and uh, he was uh, somebody that you know I was very familiar with talk you know he was constantly on the forums giving you know feedback and heck um our guilds segoy and uh winter blades were kind of natural rivals because jesus fucking christ they are stomping up there um our guilds are um natural rivals uh just due to the fact that we're the two biggest most active or we're the two biggest guilds that are active right now in the testing so we kind of clash heads a lot so cool waters is a name that you would probably see pretty frequently in my videos and you'd see him in uh in their videos and you know pretty big part of the community this guy was and uh he uh he kicked the bucket so that sucks and this is the weird thing with um video games and the youtube thing and just this whole internet culture in general is that uh we really take for granted that these people are people and i know that sounds really weird but in these mmos it it's really easy to forget that that's a real person behind the keyboard that's playing that game with you. you you're, you know, you know they're real, but you, you there's a mental disconnect because you don't see them. You don't, you don't physically see them, and uh, you know it just kind of takes somebody dying like this for you to realize, like, oh fuck, man, 
this shit is real. These people are real. And this is not the first time this has happened to me. I've made, I think I've made like two videos talking about the same topic before, but it always fucking gets to me every time it happens. Um, because it really is a wake up call because you just sort of forget that, you know, fucking cool water is actually a fucking real dude with a real life doing shit. And then it's just gone. So, um, you know, rest in peace to, uh, cool waters. Um, Fuck, man, it sucks because he, he didn't get to play the game, man. He didn't get to fucking play the, the game. So, uh, you know, fuck, man. God damn, what a, how dark, how fucking dark is this, this fucking podcast? But anyway, I just wanted to get it off my chest, man. I guess this is the Zyback therapy session. Um, anyway, speaking of uh, fitness stuff, I am, uh, I've been cutting down a good bit. I am pretty sure I'm reaching the tail end of my cut. Um, I am currently about 215 ish. Um, and my cut has been sort of weird. Like I, I'm at one point, I literally weighed 189 pounds. So I've sort of like recomped slash cut slash recomped. I, I don't really know what, what you want to say, but I, my weight hasn't been consistently like the number hasn't consistently gone down, but like my waist size has. So, um, and some of that, and that that was that wasn't on purpose. That was just like, fuck. It's the holidays. I guess it's time for a uh, caloric surplus for a little time being. And I put on some muscle during that that period. And then I started cutting back down again, just naturally, right? Um, but yeah, I'm 215 right now. I don't think I'm gonna be. I don't think I'm gonna be doing too much more like recomping. I think at this point I'm probably gonna drop down to like 210, 205. I'm not, I'm not sure how far I'm gonna drop down. That's the thing. I've never been this lean before. I've got some, I've got some, some pooch there. I wouldn't mind, uh, I wouldn't mind dropping. Um, and at this point my strength is still good. And that seems to be from all the stuff I've been reading. Uh, that seems to be the best point to stop cutting is when your strength really starts to take a hit. Um, and so far it hasn't. Um, however, when my, when I'm like really disciplined on my diet and I haven't had any sort of like carb cheat day or I don't I don't do cheat days but when I haven't fucked up on my diet at all I have noticed that I'm a little fucking drained in terms of like the muscle glycogen kind of shit um but still still strong you know I mean yeah it might be a little bit more difficult but like I'm still deadlifting my dead my, my my big compounds are all still there and fuck my deadlift actually went up slowly over the past like month or so not much but it has gone up and my weight has gone down so it's good um anyway um so the cut uh gonna be doing that for a little bit longer i'm in i'm at this weird spot so um i don't think i'm gonna get too much smaller so i actually went and bought some a uh, new wardrobe and um holy fuck is that annoying that is some Holy shit, man. Getting clothes that particularly shirts is so annoying. So my my shirt size, right? So you look at this shirt, right? That I'm wearing right here, right wearing right here. It fits it fits pretty snug. This is an extra large. This is an extra large. I have large t-shirts that are considerably more baggy than this. And then I've got an extra large t-shirt that fits exactly like this one does. So shirt sizes it is like impossible for me to find shit that fits because it's either, um, and, th and this is because of me being tall. Well, it it's a multiple of factors, right? And I don't want people to think like, oh, Zoya, I'm so fucking buff and I'm so, I've got so much muscles, it makes it hard. But if you work out, it does make it a little harder to find clothes that fit, especially if you're fucking tall. Um, so the shirts are either really fucking tight up here and they're loose down here, which is like how this one is, or the sleeves are really tight, or the sleeves are too short, or the shirt itself is too short, or if I get a shirt that fits comfortably everywhere, the thing is a fucking dress and it's really long. Um, so I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to get some feedback from you guys here, but um, is that is this like douchey tight? Like this is an extra large. Do I need to get a two XL for this? particular shirt style like i fucking don't know if i am in the in the clear here or if i'm uh, a little douchey looking who knows but anyway let me know what you think i'm gonna back up here Let's see do i have enough runway here to uh 
Yeah, you can see it. Is this too tight? Like, I, I, I fucking have no idea. So, apparently shirts are supposed to be somewhat snug around the waist, right? That's what I've heard. And this is, like, it's not, like, fucking skin tight by any means. But it is, a, it, it's kind of, like, tight up here and tight on the sleeve. So, I, I don't know what to do, man. Like, I can get a bigger shirt, but then the thing's going to be way too fucking long. Or it's going to be way too baggy at the, at the bottom. Or I can stick with this, and it's really tight on the shoulders and on the, like, back and shit. So, I don't know, man. I don't know what to do. It's a, it's the goddamn struggle. And I really wish they would, um... I really wish that shirts fit like pants. Like, with pants... So, I wear a weird pant size, too. Um, because I'm tall. I wear a 34-34. Which is, uh, pretty uncommon to find in stores. However, a 34-34 fits... About the same for every single pair of pants. You know, I can go online, 34, 34. I buy it. It's probably going to fit unless there's some weird vanity sizing bullshit. But with shirts, this... <laughs> I have shirts that are larges, that ha are baggy. And then I have two XLs that are fucking pretty tight. So, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's really fucking annoying. So, anyway. Feels good to buy some new clothes, though. Some clothes that fit. I was very, very, I'm very, very frugal, or some people would say cheap, I like to say frugal. Um, during my fat fuck cutting phase, I only bought a couple shirts and one or two pairs of pants. So I went from like super fat fuck Zyback pants to intermediate pants to now the new pants I've got that fit nice, that I think will fit nice forever, um, hopefully. Um, so... I only bought like very few clothes. I didn't want to buy multiple wardrobes through the whole cutting phase and waste a bunch of money. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I my clothes there for a bit were just falling off me. They were they were way too baggy. And I, I finally bit the bullet. At this point, I, I'm I'm still sort of a little little hesitant. Like I might have pulled the trigger a little too soon. Um, but I think it's gonna even out. So I'm still cutting. So like this shirt might get a little looser on me. Uh, as I drop, um, the last, I don't know, five, 10 pounds. I don't know how long, how much more it's going to be. Um, so it might get a little looser on me, but I have no fucking idea what's going to happen when I up the food because, um, I have a feeling and maybe I'm just being optimistic here. I've been at a caloric deficit for a really long time, a really, really long time. And I have a feeling that I'm going to have some some pretty big noob gains in terms of uh, size and strength happen when I up the carbs in particular. Because um, uh, not that I'm like against eating carbs right now on this, this cut I'm doing, but carbs are kind of the easiest thing to cut out because if you're getting, you know, you want to keep your protein high, obviously, so you, you maintain your muscle mass, right? So when you do that, your fat, you know, fat and protein kind of, they're put together a lot. So it's pretty easy to to eat a good bit of fat with your protein and uh carbs it's just kind of the easiest fucking thing to cut out but um once you add them back in all of a sudden you have you have way more work capacity and way more you know muscle building potential there so uh i think i'm gonna have some noob gains so i'm looking forward to that i am not going to bulk a lot of people i know that's something people like to do they like to uh start their bulk right after they finish their cut. I'm not going to be one of those guys. Yes, it might mean I make slower progress. I'm okay with that. Um, but I I can't I can't bulk. I have a fucking unhealthy relationship with food. Like I got up to fucking like 330 plus pounds. Like bulking is not something I can do. Um, I will be bulking in the sense of like 100 to 200 calories over maintenance once I clock that in what my maintenance actually is. Um, so I'll be doing that and doing little mini cuts here and there, but in terms of like, I'm going to go and gain 30 fucking pounds and then drop it all off. Like, that's not something I'm going to do. Um, yes, I'm aware that that might mean I make slower progress, but I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it taking longer and, um, I don't know, just staying the same body fat percentage, roughly maybe fluctuating a few percentage points. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of been the, the fitness update. This, this hive mind podcast has been very fitness oriented. Um, but yeah, I figured I'd give you guys an update cause I, I, I think the last time I did one of these was like two months ago. So yeah, 
All right, what else we got going on? Uh, the Mayweather-McGregor fight. Uh, let me show you my phone here. I am recording this podcast before the fight, even though you uh, will be seeing it afterwards. As you can see, it is 449 on August 26th. My predictions for the Mayweather-McGregor um, fight. I think and I want to be wrong. I do. I really do want to be wrong here. I think that Floyd Mayweather is going to dance around the ring and um, take very little damage and do very little damage, and he's going to win by decision. It's going to go the distance, win by decision, and both of those guys are going to look like they didn't even get into a fucking fight. That's what I think is actually going to happen. What I want to happen is I want fucking McGregor to knock him the fuck out in some brutal fashion, or I want it to be like a, like a fucking brutal... Uh, war. Like, I want to see, like, a um, Gustafson John Jones style war. Holy fuck, that fight was nuts, dude. Those two guys <laughs> beat the shit out of each other in that fight. Um, I'd love to see some shit like that, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think, in reality, Floyd Mayweather is going to be the defensive god that he is and just dance around the ring, win on the points, and do no fucking damage. And Connor's going to do fucking no damage, and they're both going to look like. They didn't even fight. It's gonna suck. It's gonna fucking suck. But anyway, I'm going to a uh, going to a. I don't know. I don't know if it's a party. I guess a get together, potluck. I don't know for the fight. So that should be fun. Trying to get out and be more social and do more social things and spread my wings more than I have been in the past. Uh, it's just something I, I've always been really bad about. That I've always been really bad about being. Now, and it's not that I'm anti-social. It's just so easy to just be like, oh, I'm just going to stay inside and watch Netflix. I'm just going to work on the YouTube thing. I'm just going to do the things I'm comfortable doing. So I'm trying to uh, expand um, expand what the fuck I'm, I'm up to, you know. I uh, went to a uh, bar last night, even though I don't drink. Just went to a bar and hung out with some people and these side uh, I've still got the I've got the proof you can see well it's washed off a little bit but you can see the ink they had to fucking stamp my shit so ah but um you know trying to trying to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and um do some new shit um but yeah uh old Zyback is um is not going away completely I promise when when Crowfall starts ramping up I'll fucking Put on the nerd. Hey, it's time to play some Crowfall. Fucking math it up. Their spreadsheets and shit. Uh, but you know, I'm trying to uh, trying to do some new stuff. Um, speaking of Crowfall, Crowfall is uh, starting to starting to get exciting. Uh, 5.3 is getting close. 5.3 is going to be. Um, we're, a lot of people in my guild were calling it like the God Patch, and I know this is this is a really bad idea to hype it up like this because 5.3 is going to come out and it's going to be buggy as fuck 100% guaranteed there's no way it isn't and there's going to be tons of issues uh but 5.3 is going to be a serious patch for crowfall it's probably going to be one of the defining patches of crowfall that takes crowfall from being fuck is going on outside it takes crowfall from being jesus really somebody like inflating a tire out there what the fuck is that God damn. It sounds like somebody's inflating one of those like inflatable mattresses. Like the air mattresses where you like turn the pump on. It's like. That's what it sounds like. But anyway, 5.3 for Crowfall is going to be one of the defining patches that makes the game a game. Uh, you got the race class split. A lot of the sieging stuff is going to be in by then. Uh, we might be seeing some tree of life stuff. So um, that should be pretty cool. Uh, there's been a lot of Crowfall updates that have happened since I made the last podcast. The Meet the Elkin, the skills update, the Crowfall cinematic that came out. Uh, it was an in-game cinematic. It's not, it's not like triple A fucking CG crazy graphics, uh, but it was all right. Um, so yeah, Crowfall starting to come together. If you're interested in Crowfall, be sure to sign up with the link in the description down below. You get to the beta for free as well as getting 5% off and you support the channel. Um, a lot of you guys have been signing up with that link as of recently. I think a lot of people are, a lot of you guys are starting to see the light when it comes to Crowfall and get excited, which is making me excited. Um, so yeah, I'm very pumped for that. I haven't been playing too much Crowfall as of recently because the game has kind of been a little stagnant because everybody's sort of waiting for 5.3. Uh, but 
man, it's close. It is close, and there's a lot of stuff coming with the skills revamp, the race class split, with the cleric. Man, there's so much shit coming in 5-3. It's going to be nuts. So, looking forward to that a lot. Um, what else we got? Uh, Magic the Gathering MMO. Uh, this is not new news, but I mean, I guess it's newish. Uh, there is a Magic the Gathering MMO being developed. I'm very excited for this. I really hope it is a triple A real MMO. I really don't want it to be Neverwinter. Please don't be something like Neverwinter. I want it to be like a game that's got a Star Wars The Old Republic Wild Star budget and Wild Star Star Wars The Old Republic scope. I want it to be a real fucking game. Um, because that IP deserves it. That The Magic the Gathering IP is maybe one of the best IPs for an MMO ever. Because it's very open-ended. There aren't defined heroes. There's been so many different versions and iterations of it that they can go anywhere they want to with it. There's not defined... like It's not like Warcraft, where when World of Warcraft came out, we had all these defined heroes with Arthas and Illidan and all these characters that had to sort of be there. With Magic, it's way more open-ended. Like, they can take that shit really anywhere they want, and they just have so much shit to work with. So, uh, man, I hope it's good. I really hope it's good. So, please don't fuck it up. Oh, man, it could be so... It could be one of the best. One of the best. I can't... I'm trying... I'm sitting here trying to... Oh, my God, there's a spider on the ceiling. I'm sitting here trying to uh, think of a better IP than Magic the fucking Gathering, but it's got, like, 20-plus years... Of, like, cool shit that is perfect for MMOs. Like, fuck. It's amazing. Anyway, anything else we got going on? I have a whole bunch of other topics here on my phone. A lot of this stuff is, like, horribly outdated. Like, Twitch affiliates getting sub buttons when that was, like, fresh drama. Like, that just shows you how, how long it's been since I've done a, uh, a podcast with if that was the hot topic that I wrote in my phone. I wrote down Blue Whale Challenge. I can't even remember what that is. What the fuck is the Blue Whale Challenge? Apparently, I thought it was important enough to put it in my notes for my podcast at some point. Um, uh, I think that's all I really want to talk about. Yeah, I'm not going to get into the whole Charleston thing because I've kind of talked about it in previous videos. and um, I've got some other stuff I want to make a standalone video on. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I know it was kind of a dark... A dark episode uh, this week or this month or this bi bi monthly podcast, wherever the fuck this is gonna end up being. Um, but you know, I had some stuff I wanted to to get off my chest, and uh, I don't know, give you guys a little bit of an update on what I, what's been going on in uh, in Zyback Land. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.